ever wrote to you. It's nine o'clock. I know, I know. Lights, you damn fool, lights! How often have I told you I will not burn electricity after nine o'clock? The kitchen clock is slow. <laughs> slow and inefficient, like yourself. Did you post the letters? Yes. They'll all be here on Friday. Six poor relations. And every one of them wanting my money. Well, I've warned you. If I don't get satisfaction, I shall... What? I shall leave. You don't, Julia. And you know why. Thank you. How flattering to have such attention. Eh, hey, Julia? Pity Charles and Hugh aren't here to join in the homely gathering. Well, it's their own fault. I posted the letter. You know, we should see more of each other. Families should hang together. Hang together. I can care. Oh, good. Damn good, Everett. <laughs> what a charming house this is. You know, it has an atmosphere. <laughs> it has. <laughs> is it haunted, Cousin Everett? Haunted? Of course not. Damn nonsense. It ought to be. That sounds exciting. Why, Lucille? Well, William Hope, Everett's brother, fell to his death from that window up there. It's Mr. Hope's bedtime. Eh? Witness the efficiency of my staff. Griggs is concerned over my guests and Miss Carberry over my health. <laughs> Most commendable. <laughs> Most commendable. <clears throat> I've decided not to tell you this evening what is in my mind. My lawyer will be here tomorrow for the purpose of altering my will. My will. Now, who's going to benefit, I wonder? With so many attentive relatives and staff, and realizing the amount of money involved, it's been rather difficult to make a decision. I hereby give and bequeath all my personal effects together with the sum of the... Uh, to whom? To you, Julia? After all, you have been my housekeeper for 16 years. And then there's Griggs, that good and faithful servant. Griggs has hopes. Haven't you, Griggs? Oh, don't look so glum, Cecil. It may be you. If it hadn't been for my brother William, I might have been a poor man. Do you know the only happiness my money has given me? Keeping all you people guessing. <laughs> the butcher, the baker, the candlestick maker. <coughs> Uh, good night, Everett. Ah, uh, God. It may even be you. Anyway, I've made up my mind. My mind. Isn't it strange that with all the miracles of modern science, nobody can read the mind? My decision is locked in here. Anyway, I'm not dead yet. <laughs> Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. Isn't it exciting? It's just like Christmas Eve. Oh, what a father Christmas. Come, Lucille. Candlelight. Oh, what fun. Are we on the right road? Shh. Nine, ten, eleven. Where did that come from? A clock. I know that, you fool, but what direction? Uh, just behind me. Is that north? Well, not if I turn round. Oh, no. You've got a match. Okay. Ah. Put that light out! Oh, what's going on? Oh, good evening, Warden. Could you help us? We're looking for a house called Brakes. Been looking for it the last two hours. Is this it? Oh, 
You just put it there. A bit late to be calling on Mr. Hope. Oh, we're cousins of Mr. Hope. Uh, he's expecting us. I see. All right, gentlemen, I'll show you the way. Oh, thanks very much. Is it far? Only about half a mile up the drive. Oh, is that all? all? There you are, gentlemen. Thank you, Walton. Hope to see you tomorrow. Good night. Good night. Well, here we are. Not yet. They've locked up. Ring the bell. Don't do that. You'll wake up the house. Isn't that what we're trying to do? You don't want to upset the old man, do you? There must be another way in. Let's try the back of the house. I should hate to sleep in a cucumber frame. Cucumbers, cucumbers. What's that? Cucumber frame? Oh. Any cucumbers? Here we are. Oh. Oh. The things we do for a fortune. Yes, if it wasn't for that, we'd be at our local now. Warm and wet. What on earth are you talking about? Warm outside and wet inside. Oh, I see what you mean. Inside out. Inside out. All I know is I'm going to break into that house, even if I break my neck. What's that? Cucumber frame. Now what have you done? Aren't you clumsy? Bert. Look, there's a window over here. Got a knife? What do you want a knife for? Cut glass. Knife won't cut glass. Oh, got any diamonds? Diamonds. Well, then we can't cut glass. Watch me cut glass. <laughs> Charles! Charles! What do you do that for? How'd you get in? Through the door. Oh. It's a perfectly normal way of entering, old boy. Oh, come on. Let's take a look round. Oh. Right, you damn boy, right. Sounded like Cousin Everard. Cousin Everard. Got a match? You heard what he said? Oh, go on, risk it. Only one left. Right, you damn boy, right. You ought to have been a warden. Come on. Through there. That was the last match. I couldn't help it. Brigade, please, quickly. Griggs, there is no fire. Phone Dr. Musgrove. Get me Dr. Musgrove. Yes. Hubert's dead. Accidental death, me foot. Why not? That was the doctor's diet. Stop. Diet. Uh, what does he know about it? Why, I went to him last winter with chilblains on me foot as big as tomatoes. Do you know what he'd give me? A bath. No, a couple of cascaras. <laughs> Accidental death was the coroner's verdict, and that's all there is to it. What makes you think different, Will? I put two and two together. Old Everard Hope were a skinflint. And because he was a skinflint, he had lots of money. When he bops off, somebody's going to get that money. He had a lot of poor relations. Ah, and they were all down at the weekend. Ah, you're right. See what I'm getting at? I wouldn't suggest that, old man. That's dangerous talk. I believe in speaking my mind. Same as I did in this very bar 16 years ago, when old Mr. William Hope went. Ah, here comes Mr. Griggs. He'll prove it. Ah, Mr. Griggs, we were just talking about Mr. William's death. You was in service at the time, wasn't you? Yes. Small bitter, please. And so they brings that one in as accidental death. And old Everard Oak gets the money. 
The coroner's verdict was right and proper. Morning, dear. Good morning. What can I get you? Two bidders, please. That was a whacking big wreath you sent. Where did you get the money from? I got it cheap, old boy. Made for a fellow who wouldn't die. What did you put in the card? Just gone, but not forgotten. Well, why didn't you add, we hope? Anyway, we shall know all about it in half an hour's time. Your drinks, gentlemen. Thank you, gorgeous. How much is that? One and four. One and four? There we are. Thank you. Well, done, Hope. Done, yeah. Blimey. What's up? Didn't you see what I saw? No, what? A fellow in the raincoat. William Gordon. Well, who's he? Tiverton's general manager. Put him in the turf commission, people. Mm -hmm. How much do you owe them now? Nearly 200. It's truth, you could have bought a horse for that. What sort of chap is he? Well, not bad, but shrewd. He's an ex-CID fellow. What, as well? As well. Here, come on. Uh, Good morning. Good morning. Nice day for a funeral. Whose? Now, look here, old boy. We're just on our way to hear old Hope's will read, so uh, we'll see you later. Definitely. Yes, Definitely. Hey? Oh. Tomorrow night I marry Sally's mother. Oh, Sally's the girl for me. I'd never marry another. It's Sally night. Tomorrow night I'd marry Sally's grandmother. Good morning. Morning, sir. Do you look after all this garden without any help? <laughs> I haven't had any help for years, but I get a deal of hindrance. Oh, how? Women. Why, only the other day I sowed some grass seed. Spent hours tying threads across to keep the birds away. And what does young Gwen, the daily help, do? What? Scatters breadcrumbs over the old blooming patch. Uh, you the will reading party, sir? Oh, no, I'm just interested in a distant sort of way. <laughs> Strikes me one or two's interested in a distant sort of way. Oh. The very night Mr. Hope died, some vermin smashed my cucumber frames and that there window. Hmm, seemed to have had a rough night at breaks. <laughs> I say it were. What with people breaking in and shouting fire and phoning doctors. I hear the old boy left a lot of money. I wonder who the lucky person will be. <laughs> so does a lot of others. They're all in there now, scratching their palms for luck. <laughs> this is the last witament of me, Everett Hope, of Brakes, Fox Norton, in the county of Hertfordshire, gentlemen. Made this 5th day of August, 1938, and I hereby revoke all former wills and testamentary dispositions of any kind at any time heretofore made by me. I appoint Barclays Bank Limited and Middleton, Middleton and Middleton solicitors, here enough to call my trustees, to be the executors and trustees of this, my will. To my cousin Garth Hope, a member of the legal profession, who as such must realize the evils which attend the accumulation of monies, and will no doubt appreciate my thought in relieving him of such embarrassment, I bequeath something which in his profession should prove of immense value to him. My fountain pen. To my cousin Cecil Tempest, writer for the periodical known as Youth of Tomorrow, I bequeath something of which I feel he is in need. <coughs> my dictionary. <coughs> to my cousins, the brothers Charles and Hugh Lacey, who I have often observed appear to be able to live upon their wits in far greater comfort than I have been able to afford, I bequeath my congratulations. To my housekeeper, Julia Carberry, who has so often reminded me that I'm a miserable old sinner, I bequeath my Bible. I shall contest the will. This thing's an insult. The old boy's cuckoo. But a dictionary. Oh, thanks. Well, that's that. I'd like to tell him what he could do with his congratulations. It's a bit late now, boy. Oh, he can't be allowed to be. Mr. Middleton. Mr. Middleton, who is the legatee? If everyone will please remain quiet, I will complete the reading. I hereby give, devise, and bequeath all my real and personal property, including the estate known as Brakes, to Miss Dorothea Capper. Dorothea Capper? Oh, Capper. she? One moment, please. There are two conditions attached to this legacy. One, within 48 hours of notification, the legatee must take up residence in the estate known as Brakes. Two, that Miss Capper, the legatee, remains in residence for at least one calendar month from taking up such residence. In the event of Miss Capper not complying with these conditions, I leave the whole of my estate and fortune to my nearest relative. Uh, the deceased adds a somewhat typical footnote. It reads, and you can sort that out amongst yourselves. <laughs> Is the thing legal? Well, legal or not, I shall contest it. 
In any case, I'll ask you to call them. We've got to get in first, understand? Oh, they're Cecil and Brenda. I wonder what they're up to. Garth and Lucille are having a word. I wonder what they're up to. Are you coming with us, Lucille, darling? Come on, Lucille. The thing to do, old man, is to make a fuss of her. What should we do? Marry her? What, both of us? No, toss for it. Oh, that's an idea. Let's finish them. Uh, what time is it, sir? Oh, about 12.30. Oh, I must go and get my dinner. Will reading must be over by now. Oh, yes. Well, thanks for the little chat. Not at all, sir. Good day. Good day. Hey, you two. How'd you get on? Disqualified. Oh, bad luck. Mm. Not even place money, eh? Not a sausage. We're going to the local. Coming? Uh, not now. I'll see you down there later. By the way, who came in first? An outsider named Kappa. Never heard of her. So long. Goodbye, Miss... Oh, Mr. Middleton. Yes? Doesn't matter. Oh. Expectations, eh? Well, hadn't we all? Yes, hadn't we all. Well, goodbye, Miss Carberry. I shall be calling in on your new mistress. Take great care of her. She's worth a lot of money. I shall take care of her, Mr. Middleton. Goodbye. Goodbye. Griggs, I want a word with you. Yes, Miss Carberry. You heard, of course. Yes. Hmm. Thought you would. Who is she? Well, not an entity. All these years of service, and what do I get? That. I'm no better off. You've heard the conditions. Yes. She must remain in residence 28 days. Yes. You going to leave? What are you going to do? Stay on. I've made my plans. What are they? <laughs> they are locked in here. Why do you want to see me? To discuss our new mistress, Miss Kappa. Ladies and gentlemen, it gives me great pleasure to introduce the winner of my amateur talent competition, Miss Dorothea Kaffer. She's very kind to consented to come along and sing and dance the number which has brought her success and, I hope, fame. And by the way, I might just add that her partner, Maurice, is not her husband, nor is he likely to be. So here's your chance, fellas. Ladies and gentlemen, Miss Dorothea Kaffer. <laughs> And 
for the bookings to roll in, eh? Oh. <laughs> well, I suppose you'll be having your name in electric lights. If it wasn't for the blackout. Oh, good night. Good night, miss. Can I have your autograph, please? Oh, God, oh. she's no star. She's just an amateur. You are Miss Kappa? Yes. I am Miss Julia Carberry, your housekeeper. I'm afraid there must be some mistake. I, I have no housekeeper. But you have, Miss Kappa. You've had no news. News of what? Of your inheritance. My inheritance? Haven't you heard from your late uncle's solicitor? Ah, that may explain matters. I called here this afternoon, but there was nobody at home. No, I've been out all day. I think I had better answer that. Good news. Oh. What is it? Does Bob Hope live here? No. She's a fast worker. She's a nuisance. We're just a couple of also rams beaten at the post. Why bring that up? Well, what should we do? Toss for it. What? Heads we stay, tails we don't. Okay, what is it? Tails. Come on, they're open. 
Have you read that letter? Yes. Well? Well, I, I don't understand. Everett Hope has left you the whole of his fortune. Left me his fortune? Yes. One hundred thousand pounds. But it's incredible. One hundred thousand. But why? He was only a name to me. I remember when I was small, my mother telling me that... Mr. Middleton, the writer of that letter, will no doubt explain. But what about the other relatives? They do not inherit the money. But they need it. I should imagine I'm pretty popular. That remains to be seen. It says here, Mr. Middleton wants to explain the terms and conditions of the will. Do you know them, Miss Carberry? Yes. You must take up residence within 48 hours of notification. And you must remain in residence. Oh, I shall enjoy doing that. Will you? Well, of course. All that money and an estate. What fun. We must celebrate. I have some sherry here. I'm afraid it's only cooking sherry. But it's the best I can do. Miss Kappa, I'm not used to all this light. Do you mind if I... Well, of course not. Have you a headache? No, I haven't got a headache. I love bright lights. I suppose it's living alone, but shadows frighten me. Shadows are my friends. How funny. Well, here's to a bright future. To the future. Tell me, Miss Carberry, about breaks. Have you lived there long? Sixteen years. Have you been happy? It's an unhappy house with an unhappy history. Oh. Family ghosts? Yes. Oh, so I, I'm to have a family ghost of my very own. Yes. Oh. No, please, Miss Kappa. Oh, I, I'm sorry. I, I forgot. Tell me, uh, what is the history of Briggs? Evil people have lived there and evil people have died there. Oh. Who lives there now? Oh, uh, you do, of course, but who else? Griggs, the butler, is the only other resident. What's he like? In appearance or personality? Both. Unpleasant. Oh, sounds a jolly little thing. Miss Kappa, I felt it my duty to come and warn you. I advise you to keep away from breaks. You will not be happy there. Particularly with your temperament. But if I stay away, I won't get the money. Hmm. Are you happy here? But of course. Then remain here, Miss Kappa. All right, I'll go. Good evening. Oh. Is Miss Kappa in? She is in, but not at home. Bit of a contortionist, what? May we see her? Miss Kappa doesn't wish to be disturbed. No, I thought not. Well, would you mind giving that note to the part that he's in? A note for you. Oh, thank you. It's from your relatives. My relatives? We are your cousins, Charles and Hugh Lacey. Please sit down. Will you lunch with one of us tomorrow, whoever wins the toss? Please phone Mayfair 0200. Congratulations on your good news. How nice of them. So they've started. They sound interesting. There will be many people interested in you now. You also have a solicitor in the family. Not a very good one. And a bohemian scribbler. Not a very good one. Unscrupulous, poor relations. Those are the people you are surrounded by. Vultures, Miss Kappa. Then the sooner I go to breaks, the better. So you've made up your mind? Of course. I'm not going to throw away a fortune because of a gloomy old house with a lot of mice and ghosts. I know. We'll have a housewarming with lots of lights and music. I'll sing a spooky song. We'll have a ghost chorus and you and Griggs can be in the front row. 
Oh, I'll change brakes, Miss Carberry. Brakes may change you. I'll risk it. Well, in that case, I shall go and prepare for you. Very black outside. Have you a torch? No, I prefer the dark. How strange. I love the light. I always draw back the curtains for the last thing at night. Why? To catch the first of the sun in the morning. Oh. How strange. Good night, madam. This is the last time. Good evening. Good evening. Are you a relative? <laughs> no, I'm just an ordinary sort of person. Oh. What do you want? A little talk with you. May I come in? What's it about? Julia Carberry. Won't you please come in? Thank you. She's just gone. Yes, I know. I saw her leave. This way, Mr... Gordon. William Gordon. Mr. Gordon. I'm Miss Dorothea Kepper. Yes, I know. Would you mind telling me your business? Well, as you see, I'm the general manager of a turf commission agency. But I used to be with the CID. Oh? A detective? X. <laughs> How exciting. Mm, not so exciting as it may seem, but it had its moments. Oh. Miss Kepper. What do you think of your housekeeper? Well, she's... she's a trifle odd. She... likes the dark. Well, I won't keep you in the dark any longer. You've inherited a lot of money, Miss Capper. Yes. And money can be dangerous. To the person who has it? Sometimes. Particularly when people are disappointed or jealous. Jealous of me? But why? I want to help people. Yes. And some people want to help themselves. Oh. Oh, at the moment, there's nothing to worry about. Now, please look upon me as a friend. And if I can help, just get in touch with me at any time. You have my number. Oh, that's very kind of you. And now, if you'll excuse me, I must get along. But of course. You see, Mr. Gordon, I'm a very lonely person. Until today. Oh, yes, of course, I forgot. But at the moment, I feel rather... Overwhelmed? Yes. Well, there's no need to be, Miss Kappa. Good night. Good night, and thank you, Mr. Gordon. a little more elaborate, madam. Excuse 
Excuse me, but are you one of the Mr. Laces? Oh, I beg your pardon. I'm so sorry. I didn't hear you. Hmm? Are you one of the Mr. Laces? Yes, I'm Charles Lacey. Oh, I'm Miss Keffer. I'm, I'm afraid I'm a bit late. Not at all. Right on time. How are you? How do you do? Yeah. Aren't you rather hot in there? Yes, I am a bit. I expect you are. Let me take them from you, will you? Here, Paige. Oh, thank you. Take these and put them in cold storage for me like a good boy, will you? There we are. Now, what do you say to a cocktail? I'd love one. Would you care to sit at the table or go to the bar? Oh, I'd like to sit on one of those high stools. It'll be fun. Yes, reminds yes. me of my nursery days. Yes. Can you make it? Yes. Whoops, a daisy. There we are. Ah, that's better. Hi, right, Tony. Tony, Miss Kappa, Miss Kappa, Tony. How do you do? One of the very best is Tony. Tony's one of the very best. Now, what are you going to have? Oh, that one's pretty. It goes with my frock. Yes, I don't think it would go with your inside. Tony, two of your special. Oh, okay, Mr. Charles. Oh, what a lovely place. Yes. Do you come here often? No, oh, we practically live here. Who's we? Well, my brother and I. Oh, well, where is your brother? Couldn't you both afford to come? No, 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 it wasn't that. No, um, he was unlucky. He lost the toss, you know. Oh, I see. You like one of these? No, thank you. Mm. How much are those? They are paid for, sir. Well, who's our host? The gentleman just arrived. Who is he? My brother. How nice. Mm. Well, 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 it's a small world. Unfortunately. How do you do, Miss Capper? I'm Hugh, a brother of that. How do you do? Well, down she goes. Ah, same again, Tony, please. Yes, Mr. Charles. Your change. Oh, thank you. I say, that's a nifty little hat. Oh, well, I'm so glad you like it. I'm afraid I've been very extravagant. Well, they've rather left me his fortune. I'd be wearing three hats by this time. But I haven't got the money yet. Well, that should be easy enough. All you've got to do is to stay at breaks. I've heard it's rather frightening. Ah, that sounds like Julia Carberry, doesn't it? Don't you take any notice of her, my dear? She's the aches in breaks. Three specials. Thank you, Tony. There you are. Thank you. Well? Down she goes. Are you feeling all right? Oh, I feel fine. Do you like these? Oh, I think they're wonderful. <laughs> oh, but this ought to be my party. Tony, three extra specials. What, large ones, mother? Great, big ones. What's going to happen? Probably go up in flames. Are you sure you're all right? Oh, I feel wonderful. <laughs> oh, this is such a change for me. Yes, I can see that. I mean, it's such a change from looking after my children. Yeah. Your children? How many? Thirty-six. Is this a war effort or something? Yes. It's amazing. It's a record. It's my war work. You're telling us. You see, I look after some children in a day nursery. Oh. <laughs> Three extra specials. Oh, goody. Oh. <laughs> well? Don't say it. Down she goes. Goodbye. Goodbye. Well, I suggest after that a spot of lunch. You do eat as well, I suppose. Oh, yes, I'm starving. Change? You may keep the Tony. <laughs> oh. 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 Hello, Charles. Hello, Bunny. Hello, Bunny. Good morning, Mr. Charles. Good morning, Louis. Good morning. Louis. Oh. Woo! Goody. On your way. Come along. They've got the Edison tail. Hmm. She looks a bit adrift to me. They've beaten you to it. What, those nitwits? <laughs> Wait till I start getting busy. And then Miss Raspberry. Carberry. Then Miss Carberry. She calls you vultures. <laughs> oh, you are a funny man. <laughs> oh. I do sit down. May I introduce myself? I'm Lucille Hope. This is Garth, my husband. We're cousins, you know. What? You and your husband? Oh, no, 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 my dear. Uh, what my wife really means is that you are a cousin of ours. Oh. <laughs> oh, of course, you telephone me. We've got an appointment at your office this afternoon. That's right. Five o'clock, Miss Kepper. <laughs> oh. Will you sit down? Thank you. There she is. Oh, yes. And Garth and Lucille and the laces. Well then, Brenda, do your stuff. Have you got those tickets for the concert? Yes, why? 
We'll ask her. Tell her I can't go. Oh, right, come on. I believe she's tight. Well, wouldn't you be? Insignificant little thing. My dear, I must take my new cousin by the hand. I'm going to Tempest. This is my husband, Cecil. How do you do? Uh, how do you do? Will you have my seat? Uh, <laughs> you must all come down to breaks. That is, if there's room for you. There seems to be such a lot of you. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Miss Catter. We shall be delighted. We shall hope to see you soon. Come along, Gus. So well, long. See you later. Well, we must be going. Uh, sit down here, Cecil. Goodbye, Miss Catter. Goodbye, and thank you for your lovely extra, extra specials. <laughs> goodbye, Dorothy. <laughs> goodbye, goodbye. Goodbye, goodbye. 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 Oh, you come from Bohemia. No, no, no. Chelsea. Oh. Is that Dorothy? Uh, uh, may I call you Dorothy? Of course. I've been dying to have a long chat with you. Yes, Miss Carberry said you would. Oh. Uh, Miss Catter, what are you doing this afternoon? I'm going to have a good sleep. Well, there's a symphony concert at the Philharmonic. I have two seats. Would you care to come? And have a good sleep anyway. Oh, that's a terribly good idea. Cecil and I were going, but I remembered another appointment. You go with Cecil. Have a good time. Your bill, sir? <laughs> Thanks. seems to think so. She was warning me last night about the house and about uh, my relatives. About me? Why, no. About all of you. She has her own axe to grind. Yes, I, I suppose so. She hates us. She showed it too, after the inquest. Inquest? Yeah. Surely you knew that Everard Hope died as the result of an accident? An accident? I know. Yes, yes, at the second of breaks. His brother William fell from a window. Broke his neck. A window? Oh. How horrible. Scrupulous poor relations. Those are the people we must see. Look! A taxi smash! <laughs> Five, miss. Thank you. Oh, I must go. Yes? It's five o'clock. I know, I know. You've only got twenty minutes. <laughs> 
It leaves at 5.20. You've been a long time. Of course, I had to be sure. Yes. Are you sure? Yes. In all probability, she kept her luncheon appointment. She'll be back in her flat tonight. What time do you make it? In two minutes past five. One minute. Check it. Now we agree. On everything. Everything. Ringing, please. Switch on. Hmm. And that, Miss Capper, is that. How did you get in? Never mind how. But it was justified, wasn't it? Yes. Look. Oh. It's like a detective thriller. This is fact, Miss Capper, not fiction. But who could have done it? Obviously not a friend of yours. I'm taking a great interest in you, Miss Capper. But mine is a friendly one. Thank you. I, I'm very grateful. But why are you so interested in me? Oh, partly because I'm an ex-detective and partly because of something I stumbled across at breaks. And, uh... Cigarette? Thank you. Who do you think fired the shot? I'll lay you a hundred to one. It was a man called Griggs. What? The butler? I followed him to town this afternoon, but he dodged me. Miss Carberry warned me about him. Oh, she did, did she? <laughs> Why are you laughing? Oh, it just strikes me as being rather funny. There's an empty flat opposite here, isn't there? Yes. Why? Oh, never mind. Now, you and I are going down to Briggs. It'll be very instructive to watch their behaviour when they're confronted with the uh, body. The body? Well, that's what they think you are now. Oh, dear. Then Miss Carberry was in with... You'll learn all you want to know about Miss Carberry. All right, Mr. Gordon. First thing in the morning. No, right now. It'll be a nice gesture for the new mistress of Brakes to greet her butler on his return. Are you game? Of course. Then go and pack a bag. Right. Forty winks? <laughs> yes, I'm afraid so. Very refreshing, though. Yes, I thought so. Only a few more miles to go. Are you feeling nervous? Just a little. Have you been inside Brakes? Yes, once or twice. Unofficially, though. What's it like? Oh, big and rambling. Is it very grim with, with shadows and ghosts? That sounds like Julia Carberry. It was. Now listen, young lady. 
The last thing that your housekeeper wants you to do is to take up residence. You must remember this. You're the mistress of Brakes, no matter what happens. Mistress of Brakes? I'll try. A lot depends on you, but you can depend on me. Mistress of Brakes? <sighs> Sounds nice. You're not a policeman. Where's your warrant? Here. Kappa. Yes. Now may we come in? Of course. This is a very late hour. Apparently you keep very late hours yourself. I often sit up late. I'm a poor sleeper. There's been an unpleasant incident at my flat. Mr. Gordon brought me down here for safety. Welcome to Brakes, madam. Thank you. Let me get oh. warm. Is Griggs here? He's gone to bed, madam. Oh. Then we won't disturb him. Oh, that's better. One moment, Miss Carberry. This is your new mistress, Miss Kaffer. Good evening, madam. Good evening. You dressed very quickly. Dress? Oh, there was a noise. I went out to investigate. In your hat and coat? I catch cold very easily, sir. Shall I show you to your room, madam? Thank you. I wasn't expecting you until tomorrow, so I'm afraid your room isn't quite ready. Oh, that doesn't matter. Griggs, as you're up, will you prepare for Mr. Gordon? Yes, Miss Carberry. This is your room, madam. Fused? I'm so sorry, madam. The late Mr. Hope insisted on having the electricity turned off at nine o'clock. The habit persists. I'll go and have it turned on at once. Thank you. Where do I go? In the room opposite. All right? Yes. Cold? No. I'll stick it. You've done pretty well so far. Have a good sleep. And if I were you, I should lock your door. If anything happens, you'll know where to find me. Ah, that's better. Oh, good. My new clothes have arrived. Gracious, where did you get all the coupons? I've hardly bought a thing since clothes were rationed. What a girl. And what a wife you'd make. You think so? Mm -hmm. Doesn't your wife save hers? I haven't got a wife. Oh. I'm sorry. 
I'm glad. Good night. Dorothea. Good night. William. William. Whitehall, one, two, one, two. Oh, Inspector on duty, please. Hello, is that you, Harry? Bill Gordon here. That little matter is pretty much as I thought. Better get cracking. Yes, I'm down there now. Right. Goodbye. Get him out of here. Switch off the lights. scare herself out of her wits and this Where house. Are you? You'd better get away before the police follow up his phone call. All right, I'll get in touch with him in the morning. You'll Mr. do Gordon. nothing of the kind. Just leave me alone. With her. Where's Mr. Gordon? Isn't he in his room? You know he's not. Where is he? How should I know? I suggest that you are responsible for your guests. But why didn't you answer me when I called? I didn't hear you. Mm. Why are you doing that? Surely you remember Miss Kappa. Now I am amongst my friends. The shadows. What's that? It can only be your departing guest. Oh, no! No! Come back! Please, come back! But why? 
has Mr. Gordon gone? People don't like this house. Do you? I'm frightened. Why won't the lights work? Why be frightened? Isn't it much more restful like this? No. No! Every night I sit quietly in that chair, listening to the voices. What voices? This. What's that? This house is full of strange noises. Now you are beginning to hear them. Sit down, Miss Kappa. And listen. <laughs> now. What's happened? I thought you'd gone. <sighs> and left you? Oh. I was going till I remembered what you said. What was that? Mistress of Brakes. Good girl. Who did this to you? I don't know. I just finished phoning and I woke up in here. Who do you think it was? Well, I'll give you two guesses. Where's the Carberry woman? She was in the hall trying to scare me. And Griggs? I haven't seen him. Of course I heard your car. I thought you'd gone. Griggs must have taken it. Come on. What are you going to do? Save some petrol. Hello? A Whitehall 1212. Oh, Inspector on duty, please. Oh, is that you, Harry? It's Bill here again. Get the boys to keep their eyes open for my car, will you? <laughs> yes. What? How long ago? About a quarter of an hour. About a quarter of an hour. Sure, you can go ahead. <laughs> Plenty. How's the head? A little larger than usual. I wonder what hit me. I wonder. Oh. Was it this? Oh, look. There's blood on it. Exhibit A. Here, let me have a look. Sorry. Shall I bathe it for you, William? Bill. Bill. No, it's nothing. It's sleepy heads that need attention. Come on. Hello, who are you? 
My name's Gwendoline. What's yours? <laughs> William. Did you come down with the new lady last night? Yes. What's she like? Charming. You're going to marry her? <laughs> now I'll ask you a question. Where were you last night? What's that got to do with... Oh, I'll get you. I'm only the daily. You can catch me staying here at night. Oh, why? Here. Hmm? Have you seen Miss Carberry? Yes. That's why. There's nothing wrong with Miss Carberry. Much. I think she's crackers. She likes sitting in the dark. Only time I like sitting in the dark is when I'm in the pictures. I bet the happiest day of her life was when they invented the black hat. Oh, I'm sure Miss Carberry is a most efficient housekeeper. What? Oh, yes, and ever so nice. Morning, Miss. Good morning, Miss Carberry. Good morning. Did you sleep well? Yes, thank you. Did you? Yes. Thank you. Any signs of Miss Kappa? No. She's probably sleeping late. She had rather a tough time last night. Tough? Yes. She was frightened. <laughs> the light's fused. Unlike me, Miss Kappa is not happy in the dark. Has Griggs returned yet? Not yet. Uh, he usually goes for a walk before breakfast. I just wondered what he had done with my car. Mr. Gordon, Miss Kappa is inclined to be nervous, is she not? Is she? Why? Oh, I just had a suggestion to offer. Well? Miss Kappa should invite her relatives to Briggs. Uh, she would then be surrounded by her friends. Has she any enemies? Oh, Miss Kappa is too charming to have any enemies. Morning, Bill. Morning, Dorothea. Did you sleep well? Yes, thanks. You're up early. Yes, I had to go to the Crown to get my things. Oh, what a lovely day. And what a difference, Miss Carberry. Yes, the sun does make a difference. <laughs> Miss Carberry has just made a bright suggestion. Really? I suggest that as you find this house rather lonely, you should invite your relatives to Brakes for companionship. But what a grand idea. Oh, what do you think, Bill? Sure, a housewarming. The old place could do with it. In that case, when will they be arriving? Oh. As soon as possible, tonight. Tonight? Tonight. Very well, madam. She's a clever devil. I don't know about clever. Oh, thank you. Hungry? Rather. Hello. Who are you? Oh, this is Gwendolyn. Morning, madam. Good morning. She just asked me if I was going to marry you. <laughs> what would you do, Gwendolyn? Me? I'd marry him. I like him. <laughs> Any offers? What shall I do, Gwendolyn? Go on, risk it. Oh, this is a bit sudden. It is, isn't it? Will you? I must have notice of that question. <gasps> I wouldn't want no notice. <laughs> Breakfast's nearly ready. <laughs> <laughs> Let me see now. Who are my guests? The Garth Hoops, the Tempests, and the Lacey. And the final demand from the decorators. Well, you'd better send that to Dorothea Capper. I can't meet it. Fancy that little nitwit controlling a hundred thousand towns. It's fantastic. She can't even behave herself in public. It's sinful. A hundred thousand pounds of that unintelligent, suburban little... Oh, even words fail me. I'll bet you within a couple of years she'll have brewed the whole lot and then start sponging on her relations. Just imagine what a tenth of that money do for us. Hello. Who? Oh, Miss Capper. How do you do? This evening? Why, of course. And my wife, we should be delighted. Matters to discuss. Now, please regard my professional advice as free, gratis, and for nothing. <laughs> yes, until this evening, then. Goodbye. Intelligent girl, eh? And now, Charles and Hugh Lacey. Oh, they won't be up yet. Well, let's wake them up. Oh, 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 oh. Oh, gosh, I'm tired. 
Hello, boy. Had a good time? Good time. Have you ever been on night ops? Uh, no, not that sort. When I die, there'll be Ravelli written on me, and it won't be on my heart. <laughs> I say, that's not five inches. Oh. Have you been eating cucumber? Oh, sorry. That's morning's paper? Yeah. What's at Windsor? Mm -hmm. Oh, the castle, the southwestern hotel. There's a pub up the hill, I forget the name of it now. No, you twerp. Racing. Oh. Oh, here we are. Probable starters for the 2.30. Happy boy, home guard, anchors away. What? Anchors away? Here, pass me that tin of bicarbonate. That's better. That phone always rings when we're working. Why don't you answer it, old boy? That's an idea. Hello. Who? No, wrong number. Any luck? Somebody said wrong number. Oh, well, let's try it again later on. Who was it? Hmm? I don't know, wrong number. Somebody called Miss Capper. What? It's Dorothea Capper, you silly so soldier. Dorothea Capper. Dorothea Capper? Oh, Lord. I know. She's dead and left us all that dough. She's gone. I told you so. What's her number? You've got it. Oh, all right. Uh, where are we? Here we are. Um, there was a young girl in the blackout who... Oh, give it to me. Here we are. Wordsworth. 3721. Hmm. I wonder what she wants. Another lunch. I know. Down she goes. Well, next time we take her to a milk bar. There's no reply. She must be dead. Unless, of course, she's gone to breaks. One of these days you'll get a strike. <laughs> I thought you must be able to say so. Now I'm going to get a bar. Let's see now. Fox Norton, one, two, one. What on earth are you doing? I've nearly finished. Are we going abroad? Well, we're staying the night at breaks, aren't we? Have you packed? Yes. I'd rather be a sailor than a la-di-da-di-da. Have you had a bath in your boots? Yes. I can't get them off. Let's see if there's anything doing. I love that song. I can't remember who. I heard it now. Hello? Hello, is anything doing at Fox Norton 211 yet? 121, you fathead. 121, you fathead. No, no, I'm, I'm so terribly sorry. No, it wasn't intended for you. Oh, it is. Thanks very much. Well, she's on the line now. You big drum. Oh. Hello, Miss Gapper. Cut off. Oh, that was Charles's fault. What's that? Tonight? Yes, we'd love to. Hmm? Oh, thanks very much. Yes, right-ho. Yes, thank you very much, Miss Gaffer. Right. Goodbye. She's got some news for us. Wants us to go down there tonight. Evening dress? No, just as we are. Fine. <laughs> There stands the beautiful stick of coconuts And there stands the lovely box of balls And there sits the wife, the darling of my life Shouting, roll and bowl and pitch him a penny a ball And there are soft balls, hard balls, balls as heavy as lead Give them a twist with a turn of your wrist and you chuck them right over your head Carrara, there stands the beautiful stick of coconuts and there stands a the lovely box of balls. Why have you come back? Well, I had to. They're watching the roads. I've been hiding all day. Could have managed better alone. Well, why didn't you? I've taken all this so far. And made a hash of it. I carried out your instructions. We've got one last chance. She's surrounded by her next of kin, and they're all hard up. Well? Supposing something happened to her while they were here. Hmm. They'd all be in the same boat, then. You mean under suspicion? Yes. Hmm. More the merrier, eh? What about Gordon? She released him. Is he still here? Yes. Well, that's risky. Of course it is. It's all risky. What do you want me to do? There stands the beautiful crowd of relatives. There stands the posse of parasites. And there stands Ogarth, who seldom has a bath. We're going to wash him forcibly one of these nights. Quite right. 
And there's the Tempest, the Laces, all of them stony broke. Hoping the one who inherits the dough will collapse and eventually choke. There stands the beautiful crowd of relatives. And here stands a beautiful pair of tops. Come in. May I speak to you, madam? Of course, Miss Carberry. Please leave that door open. Well? I want to apologize. Oh. You were frightened last night. It was my fault. In what way? I have lived in this house for 16 years. I was jealous. Sorry. May I remind Madam that I'm serving supper at nine o'clock precisely? Very well. May I assist you? Miss Carberry, you'd better go. What did she want? She came to apologize. Well, you ready? Nearly. We better get down. They're all waiting for us. Just a minute, Bill. I've been thinking about this money. 100,000 pounds is a lot, isn't it? Just wait until the commissioners for Inland Revenue have had a go at it. Even then, there'll still be a lot left. Yes. Well, I've been thinking about my relatives and... Just a moment. I know. You're going to help them. Yes. I've decided to share the money equally. Really? That's the right thing to do. Isn't it, Bill? I'd be the last person to try to stop you, Dorothea. I know that. You see, money doesn't bring happiness. Uncle Everett wasn't happy, was he? No. Then the best way I can be happy is to share my good luck with others. You're a wonderful girl. Oh, mind you, I shall keep my share. Why not give them the lot? What on earth for? You know why. Oh, I see. Let's get this business over. Okay. <coughs> By the way, what about the Carberry woman? If you mean money, she'll get her wages. She's entitled to a share, you know. Julia Carberry? But why? Because she happens to be Mrs. Everard Hope. Mrs. Hope? But why didn't she tell? All the relatives. Because, my dear, she blackmailed him into marriage. Sixteen years ago, she watched Everard Hope push his brother William out of that window. Oh, horrible. Mm. Happy little house is breaks. But why didn't she announce the marriage? Afraid of village gossip. There are still people who have their doubts about this accidental death verdict. You're right, Bill. She's a clever devil. Of course. As things are now, she only gets a share. But if you had run away last night, she'd have got the lot. Sheer greed, my dear, sheer greed. Well, you'd better go and tell them the glad news. <laughs> I'd rather you did. All right. But you'll have to make an appearance. I will, later. But you go and break it to them gently. Go on. Good evening, everybody. I say, who's this fellow? The new one on me. Perhaps it's the ghost. <laughs> Good evening. Oh, good evening. Good evening. You know my brother, I think. Could we interest you in a little song we are composing? What's it called? I want some money. I can interest you in something. Come over here. Most of you will wonder who I am. Well, my name is Gordon. William Gordon. And Miss Kepper has asked me to act on her behalf. Oh, that's different. Yeah. It's about her inheritance. Oh, yes. Miss Kepper has now made up her mind and has decided to divide her fortune equally amongst all of you. Oh, good, damn good. What a girl, what a girl. Sue, Sue, charming. Wonderful. Most generous. I call that jolly decent, don't you? One moment, please. A few nights ago, you were all in this room when a tragedy occurred, which ended Everard Hope's life. But Everard Hope was a murderer. A murderer? Yes. He killed his brother, William, and he inherited a fortune. But there was someone else who wanted to share that fortune. 
Are you suggesting that Everett's death was not an accident? Perhaps. But he himself shouted fire. Exactly. But I don't understand. Well, just imagine. A number of people in the dark. In the dark, mind you. Running around because someone shouted fire. But there was no fire. Then why did he shout? Because he wanted confusion. And in the confusion, he was going to kill again. But the tables were turned. But this is a very serious matter, Mr. Gordon. I must assert that I have no definite proof of what I've just told you. But I think you'll agree that the circumstantial evidence is pretty strong. <laughs> where we came in on. Get the lights on, quick. Eight, nine, ten, out! Come on. Well, that put pay to him. Do you mean to say you did this? Gosh, you're lucky. What a nerve. Oh, oh, that's, 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 oh, that's nothing. You see, I once learned jujitsu. <laughs> 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 What's the matter? What's the matter? 